So I'm gonna take you through some steps on cutting and piecing your borders. We're gonna start with the cutting of the borders and how you might do that. There's a couple of different choices that you have here. So I have that block that we've squared up and I've chosen these two fabrics to be the border for it. So I'm gonna have a little one inch gold border and then this plaid border on the outside. So to start with the one and a half inch first border, I wanna kind of remind you a little bit about power cutting. Here's my six inch ruler. I'm gonna line it up on the horizontal of the fabric. Square that edge off, turn it around. Now I'm gonna line it up at six inches Then I can scooch it over to four and a half. Now to three. And finally, to one and a half inches. So now I have four pieces of my border cut at one and a half inches. Now the next border I wanna use for this design is a plaid. Now working in the quilt shop, I had a lot of customers come in that were afraid of using plaid because using plaids the way that they're made when they're printed or woven, it's very, it's actually easy to get the lines be straight, but you have to know how to do it. So I'm gonna show you on this gray and white plaid because I think it'll be very clear when I show it to you. Here's my fabric rolled up just the way I always do with the two salvages together to the fold. So I've got four layers of fabric. I'm gonna cut this piece into a one and a half inch strip, just like we cut that gold fabric. So line it up on the horizontal line of the ruler, turn it around, and I'm gonna cut one and a half inches off of this. This is where the problem comes in. Do you see what that design is doing? When you use a plaid fabric and you cut it the width of fabric, no matter how much you have paid for that fabric, it has nothing to do with the quality of the fabric, although I always want you to be using high quality fabrics, but don't think that it's the fabric's fault. Anytime you have a stripe or a plaid fabric that's going the width of the fabric, that line is gonna run off the edge. It's just not possible for it with the width of fabric to run straight. So this is what you need to do. You need to take your fabric and unroll it from the way that we've been using it up till now and fold it length of grain together. So I've unfolded it and here's my 40, 40 some inches of fabric. I'm gonna fold it one more time. So my salvages are at the very top and at the very bottom. Now I'm gonna fold it just like I always do from the left side. Here's my selvage edge, nice and straight. I'm gonna line up my ruler on the horizontal line at the fold. Turn it around. Now I'm gonna cut that same one and a half inch strip. Look at the difference, all right? Those lines are running pretty true. I've got a little bit of wonkiness up here, but overall, that's a fairly true straight line compared to the one that we cut the width of fabric. So when you're using plaids or stripes in your quilts anytime that the piece is going to be big. Now if it's in the block, it doesn't matter. It's a two inch square. No one's going to notice that for two inches, if that line actually doesn't run true. But when you're using it in a sashing or a border, it is really important that you actually cut these fabrics the length of the grain so that you can get that line to be much straighter. So now going back to the red fabric that I want to use for this little block, I've already folded this fabric length of grain. I'll line up my little designs there. And I wanna cut this one a little bit wider. So I'm gonna line up on the horizontal line, square, the, square it off first. 
Now I'm going to cut three inches. So again, I'm going to use power cutting. Going to start at six inches and then go to three inches. So now I have the strips that I need for piecing the borders onto this little block. Next, I'm going to show you how to actually sew these blocks together for making them very long for when you have a larger quilt. Now I'm going to show you how I actually piece the border strips together. If your quilt is small, you probably don't need to do this, but you're going to make bigger quilts. And when you make bigger quilts, you oftentimes have to piece the borders together. I'd like to start by saying I almost always piece the borders on the diagonal. And I do that because I think it's less noticeable in the quilt, but it will waste a little bit of fabric. So you want to kind of keep that in mind. So let's say I've got some short strips and I need to piece them together. You're going to start with the strip the right sides up. So I'm looking at the good side of the fabric. My next strip is going to go right sides down on top of that. And I overlap it. I, on purpose, am having it overhang a little bit so I can very clearly see the start and the stop for my stitching line. Now, on a small piece like this, I don't normally pin it or draw it, but I want to show you how you would do that if you wanted to. I'm going to line up my ruler going from the top left to the bottom right and draw a diagonal line. Then you can take your pins and put a pin into in there. Now I'm going to take this to the machine to sew it in a minute. I want to show you what it looks like when you're doing a larger piece. So this is that six inch wide piece that I cut. Same idea. I'm going to line it, lay it down right sides up. You can see the selvage edge here. This is the other piece that I need to piece to it. Right sides down. So the selvages themselves are overhanging. Now I'm going to use my ruler, go from the top left to the bottom right, and draw my diagonal line. Now when a strip of, when the border strip is actually wider like this, I will actually draw the line. I want it to be straight. If it's not straight, it's going to bow right in the center, and I don't want that in the middle of my quilt. And one more before we actually go to the machine. What about when it's a plaid? I've talked about cutting plaids. And when you're working with the plaid, if you try to piece it on the diagonal like the other ones, the chances of you getting that diagonal to match up and actually be nice are pretty slim. So if it is a plaid or a striped fabric, I actually will line it up straight edges and I'll look at the design. Let me see if you can see this. I'll try to line up the design so that the design lines actually match up. And then I'll pin that. And when I'm sewing this, I will actually choose a design line in a matching color thread and actually sew right on that line. With a plaid or a striped fabric, you're going to get a better look that way. Now we're going to go to the sewing machine and sew these other ones together. So coming over here, I set my machine up with a like colored thread. Now in this case I use black. That is not a light colored thread, but I want you to be able to see what I'm showing you. So for a gold fabric like this, I'm going to put a gold thread in my machine. For a creamy or tan color thread like this, I'm going to put a tan colored thread. Because of the way that the seam's going to work and I want it to be as as unnoticeable as possible, I want to try to use a like colored thread. So we're going to take that gold piece that we did. I've got my pins in it, and here's my diagonal line going across. I've got my leader in already. Oh, the other thing with my sewing machine is I'm going to shorten the stitch length. So on this machine, I set it to a 2.0 stitch length, and I'm going to sew on that diagonal. Now, because I'm generally trying to do more than one thing at a time, I actually can chain piece these together. Picking up the next one, right sides down, the next, the one going on top of it, right sides up and then right sides down. Spin it around, chain piece. Now, this is a short one, so I don't really need to draw that line. Pick up another one, lay it down. 
So do you see how quickly I can do that? Not that I'm trying to rush you through the quilt making process. It's just one of those things that can make the process go a little bit faster so you can get to the end stage of your finished quilt. I'm gonna bring my ender. I'm going to cut this part so you can see here with them lined up together that I've sewed on that diagonal. Now I'm going to do the big one. So here's the big one that I laid down. I drew that diagonal going all the way down. And let's cut her off. So the next step is the pressing of it. The reason that we want the smaller stitch length and the like colored thread is because when you're piecing a border, the best way to get it to be as, no as least noticeable as possible is to press that seam open. So I cut off the fabric just a little bit past the seam allowance or the stitching line and I'm going to press it open. So even with the black thread, because I use that small stitch length, it's going to be very hard to see the stitching line between here. So I'm going to do the same thing with the gold and then we're going to start actually piecing the border on our quilt. Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe to our channel. We wouldn't want you to miss a single show. Please share us with your friends and leave a comment. We would really love to hear from you.